All right, we now have an understanding of the current or voltage, current, and resistance, how they're all linked with Ohm's law. That voltage is your pressure. It's your, in other words, it's a potential energy. It's the amount of energy that you have that can do work. You have the current, which just like it sounds like the current in a stream, it is the flow rate. In this case, we're talking about charge, so it's the rate of coulombs per second. And again, it's not individual charges, but it, think about it as buckets of charge. You equate that to our water analogy, it's like gallons per minute. And we measure that in amps. But again, that is coulombs per second. And then the third piece of the puzzle is, is resistance. It's your friction that's in there. It's, you know, anything that is going to slow these charges down is called a resistor. The resistor is a device that, uh, or a, it is a load, sometimes also called, but is going to increase the amount of resistance. Now, all wires, batteries, everything has a small amount of resistance, but larger devices such as, as we talked about, like a washing machine, a light bulb, it just depends on what device it is and how much resistance that device will have. There are two main ways that we're going to look at building circuits. And when I say circuits, it could be anything from, you know, a complex circuit that's on a, a computer board versus just the wiring in your outlet versus a Christmas tree lights. You know, those are all circuits. Circuits is just an electrical device that transforms electrical energy into something useful. And by useful, it's whatever it is. If it's a heater, we want thermal energy. If it's a light bulb, the useful form is light. And it is series and parallel. And you may have heard those before, and we'll talk about those. We're going to look at how to do a bunch of different calculations with them. It's, it's kind of, it's almost like a puzzle. We're going to take it step by step here and give you some rules as we go here. But today's lesson is just more just kind of looking at what we call the schematics and the symbols when you diagram out a circuit drawing, whether, and again, it doesn't matter if it's a household wiring diagram for wiring a home or a room or, you know, the wiring diagram for an Arduino chip. They're all done the same way and follow the same schematics and rules. So interpret and construct circuit diagrams. That's going to be the first thing. I'm going to introduce you to the uh, simulator that we're going to use. Identify circuits as open or closed uh, and deduce the potential difference across the circuit load. And again, circuit load just means resistor given the potential across the battery's terminal. So in other words, we're going to start applying Ohm's law to circuits. And again, it kind of turns it into a little bit of a puzzle. We just have to keep our rules straight and in advantages, disadvantages of series and parallel. And we'll get to all that. But today's lesson is mostly just going to be focused on understanding what a circuit diagram is and what you're actually looking at. Now, describing a circuit in words, a, you, know, you might see it written out here, a circuit contains a light bulb and a 1.5 volt D cell battery. Describing it with, with a drawing, this is something you might see now, you know, and you know me by now that, you know, this is not where we're going to end. We're not going to get into this artsy uh, diagram of drawing all these defined pictures. We will, however, learn how to turn these into very basic uh, schematics. We talk about very simple diagrams. But here you have a voltage source. In this case, it's the 1.5 volt D cell. We have some wires. We have to connect things. And this is our load, our resistor, or in, in this case, it's a light bulb. And then you have to have another wire coming back to complete what we call complete the circuit. The one thing you're going to keep in mind is, remember, these positives don't want to be over here. They don't like being next to each other. They want to get over to the negative side. There's too much resistance to just jump through the battery. And so as soon as you connect and give them a way to get to that other terminal, that's exactly what they're going to do. All right, so now what we want to do is not look at the, uh, a picture of it or words of it. We want to be able to what we call diagram it, create these schematic drawings of a circuit diagram. To do that, we have to have various symbols for these components. 
wires, they're lines, you know, and they don't have to be at right angles, but a lot of times we do draw them at right angles as we diagram it. And so your wires are made of conductors, you know, they have to have those free moving electrons in them, allow those electrons to move freely, electricity, but we just diagram as, them as a simple line. We assume that they have negligible resistance. However, in the real world, if you're doing something very finite with some very high level circuitry, you would have to account for that. Or if you're getting into big wiring and very, very high voltage, like uh, home wiring or uh, even the transmission lines that you see overhead, then you might have to, and you would have to for very long runs account for that internal resistance. And in a previous lesson, we looked at how to do that based on the area, the length, and also the material they're made of. A resistor. Now, I will tell you, it's a squiggly line, okay? Now, the amount of squigglies that you see here isn't necessarily indicative or mean anything. Just think about it this way. If the electron's moving slowly, it's gonna hit some speed bumps and slow down. That's your resistor. Any device, any load, any light bulb, Anything that's going to consume energy and slow the charge down can be drawn like this. And this is how I will always draw it. I don't care that it's a light bulb. Now, there are other symbols that sometimes you may see. I don't care if this is a hair dryer. I don't care if this is, this is a microwave, a stereo. I don't, it doesn't matter for our purposes. It's still a load or a resistor. We'll draw it the same way. You know, again, I want to show you these, but you will not see me draw them this way. You, again, you can see a resistor with a circle around it, a light bulb. You might see this. Very rarely do you see this. But another, again, I can easily just say, I don't really care. It's a resistor. A plug. So this is another voltage source. So instead of a battery, you might see two parallel lines, one bigger than the other, look for a positive negative terminal with a circle around it is typically what you would see. Now, even if it is a plug, sometimes you will still see it drawn like this. Okay, a positive sign, a little longer, negative side a little shorter. It is important they are different lengths when they're the same length, that's something else I'll show you here in a minute. Um, sometimes you will see multi-cell batteries just drawn like this, and this would tell you it's made up of a three-cell battery. Other times, again, for our to make it a little easier, I can still draw it like this, and it's not a big deal. You see the wires coming off of it. Open and close switch. The symbol comes from these, okay? These are the old school switches. These are the old school switches that you may see. And you can see how the symbol dictates or is related to exactly what the, uh, you know, the schematic is exact indicative of what these old switches look like. Now, open switch, think of a drawbridge. Cars are traveling up, they're not gonna be able to cross. So no charge, no electricity is gonna flow. Okay, the bridge is open, it's an open switch. If the lights are off in your room, this is what the wall switch inside looks like. A closed switch, again, think of the drawbridge example. Cars traveling along here, and all of a sudden, the drawbridge is down, the cars can continue to, it is closed, the cars can travel, that's a closed switch. And so this, the lights would be on. This would be off, on, open, the drawbridge is open, cars can't travel, no charge flowing. Drawbridge is closed, cars can flow, can move across, the charge can flow, the light will come on. Very important you understand the difference between an open and closed switch. Your capacitors, okay? Typically, this is what you would see as a capacitor in a small circuit board. This is what we talked about with two parallel plates. Now, there was a, there's a neat demo that I, I didn't do with you that normally I do in class to show you how you make this, you know, because they can't touch. So how are they wound up like this? Well, think about the dielectric. So if you take a piece of tin foil and then alternate it layers with something like wax paper that's an insulator, and then you can just roll it up and to create this laminated tube. And not only does it create a huge surface area if you would unroll it all, 
but it also makes it fit in a much smaller compact size. So that's why you see it in those cylindrical shapes. This is what typically you'll see, two parallel lines. And that's why I said with the battery or the voltage source, you have to make sure they're different lines or different sizes, okay? Remember, a capacitor and battery work very similar in storing charge. However, a capacitor cannot recharge itself and create a continuous pressure. The source of your potential difference, your voltage of an electric is what we call the circuit's EMF, electromotive force, okay, electromotive force. It's the pump, okay? Just think of it as your voltage source. This is your battery, your generator, your wall outlet, whatever it might be, okay? Just if you see EMF, it's just talking about that is our voltage source. Typically, that's your battery. All right. So if I go back to my previous example of having a battery, wires, and a light bulb, okay, and I use my schematics, this is what it would look like. You'd have your battery connected to a light bulb or resistor back to the other terminal. Okay? Now, sometimes you will see, if you get more advanced, you will see a battery always drawn with its own resistor to show you that there is some internal resistance that you would have to take into account. For our purposes, we're not going to worry about that. Now, just as a side note, if you put the resistor up here instead of here, it's no different. It's not going to make any difference. All right, so I want you to pause this video here after and take some time and identify what are some pieces and parts of some circuits that you see in here. Using those schematics, what do you see and how many of them? So go ahead and pause it and make your list. All right, so I see a variety of things, Okay, here I see my voltage source or my battery. Okay, I see a closed switch. I see three light bulbs. I see two resistors. And I see a variety of wires. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wires, okay? Now you could also make a statement that I just see, I see five resistors or five loads. That would, that would work as well. By the way, close switch. Can this, these charges get to the other side of the terminal? You bet. And so this would work. Those light bulbs would light up. So it says, draw a diagram of a working circuit that contains two resistors, an EMF source, which is the battery, and a closed switch. So here you go. So you got your closed switch. I got two resistors in them. I got my voltage source. Now, you could draw this a number of different ways. I could have drawn it and drawn a resistor here. I could have drawn a closed switch here and a resistor over here. It's going to work the same way. It doesn't matter. All right, in which of the circuits pictured below will there be no current? In other words, the charge cannot get to the other side of the terminal. The road is closed at some point along there. So go ahead and, and take a moment. I want you to pause the video and tell me and make a list of circuits that are that will be no current or that will not work and circuits that will work. All right, ones that will not work, okay? That means there is a way that this charge cannot get to the opposite side. Take your pencil, whatever, and try to get to the other side of the terminal. If it doesn't work, the circuit is open and it's not gonna work. In this case, I can get all the way to the other side. This would be a closed circuit, it would work. Figure six here, come around. 
drawbridge is open, not going to be able, so nothing's going to flow. Light bulb's not coming on. Seven. Go around, I can get back here, and I can go across the drawbridge, and I can get back. So that one would work. This one, go across, and there's no way. So six and eight over here are open circuits. They would not work. All right, if the potential difference across the light bulb in a certain flashlight is three volts, what is the potential difference across the combination of batteries used to power it? Well, if this is how much pressure is gonna be available for that single light bulb, that's the same pressure or voltage that's gonna be available being produced by that battery, so three volts. In what forms is the electrical energy? Remember, everything's about energy and electrical transformation here. Uh, electrical energy supplied to a string of decorative lights. Well, what's the useful form of energy if you're dealing, dealing with lights? Light. So electrical is going to be converted into light, and you will get some heat as well. Okay. All right. I want to go to a circuit demo here a little bit. You're going to be using this website periodically over this week and next week. You can drag and drop things, and there's a drop down menu here. You can get a whole bunch of other things. You drag these, you can see the little electrons sitting in there being ready. Okay, now it actually gives you a battery. Okay. You twist them, change them. You can click on the variable components and get different um, options. You can click on the junctions to break them if you want to break them and you didn't like them there. Okay. So let's just build a real simple circuit here. And it works. Once they have a path, they can go. Now, one thing you'll notice with this simulation is that these electrons move relative to their resistance. So if it's a lower resistance, you would see them moving faster. Also, you would see, you know, the brighter this light is, the more these longer these lines are gonna be as well. As soon as you break it, they can't travel. It's an open circuit. All right. Let's talk about two tools now. You know, you don't have an ohm meter, I can't measure resistance, but what I can measure is voltage. And you always, as a general, as a rule to use these, and I included a tutorial for you on Classroom, is you want to measure, remember, potential difference, the difference from one side to the other. So you want to take a probe, if I want to measure the potential difference of this battery, I'm going to put one probe on one side and one probe on the other to see a, a negative nine volt difference. Now, if you switch the probes, just because of the orientation and direction, you would see nine volts. The negative positive, just gonna differentiate between direction. Okay, again, that's the potential difference. Now, it could be 18 on one side and nine on the other, but remember, what we care about is the potential difference. Okay, that's the amount of energy that is available to do work in this circuit. So by the time these electrons get back to the other side, they will have distributed roughly nine volts. Okay, nine. That's what they're gonna. Sorry, that's what they're gonna distribute nine joules throughout the circuit per coulomb of charge. All right. Now, if I want to know the drop over across the light bulb, again, I need to measure, compare the electrons on one side to the opposite side, and I should see the same nine volts because when those electrons come back they want to have distributed all their energy at some point so if you're measuring voltage you need to measure on opposite sides because you want to know the the difference from one side to the other now current is a little different now a multimeter you could just change some dial settings changes and it's called a multimeter because it can read various things but current's a little trickier to measure, and that's why it's a little difficult. Sometimes you see these claws that kind of go around, and we'll talk about those when we get into magnetism. 
but a typical ammeter, what you could do is change this to an ammeter if you wanted, but you actually have to put it in line with the circuit. Now this isn't gonna work because it's just a voltmeter. All right, so you take the ammeter and you're literally gonna put it into part of the circuit and it's gonna kind of act like a tunnel. You can see 0.9 coulombs per second are gonna be traveling through there. So it has to be in the circuit and it's gonna basically count the flow rate. You'll get more use out of using the circuit. We're gonna build some of these circuits. We're gonna learn how to do these calculations and then check them with some of these tools. But hopefully you have a basic understanding of drawing a schematic of a circuit, what they mean, a closed open circuit and how to use the base two tools.